we love to dunk on the Beyond Meat Company and their many woes here in the carnivore space. And for good reason. All of those companies trying to pass off highly processed fake meat as nutritionally superior to the real thing are participating in keeping people unhealthy by continuing to promote a false narrative that saturated fats and meats are bad for human health, let alone the environmental part of the discussion. Nothing could be further from the truth, and even the health authorities are waking up to this. And so is the typical consumer, though the latter seems to be doing so more slowly than anyone else. So sales for Beyond Meat and its competitors are largely down. Though it's worth noting here that Beyond Meat made waves with some market investors by having a fourth quarter report of 2022 that wasn't as bad as originally predicted. That's the state the company is in. Things are so bad that the market celebrates when things aren't quite as bad as initially predicted. But now Beyond Meat have announced that they understand why the consumer is not wanting to eat their products and are taking steps to remedy it. Articles like the one I'm about to go over with you are published with investors in mind as its target reading audience, not the typical health conscious consumer like you. There are at least two kinds of consumers that they are never going to get to eat their product and they know it. Anyone eating any variation of an animal-based diet, which is a tiny part of the overall population, or people who just don't care about their health and hit the drive through or eat out several times a week and eat processed junk most of the rest of the time. The manufacturers of products like Beyond Meat aren't going to win that audience either, and they know that. What they're really wanting are the people in the middle, those who try to make healthy choices with limited information and eat out at fast and casual food places sometimes, and who might want to make what they think is a healthy choice at the drive through or sit-down restaurant. Uh, those are the same hearts and minds, by the way, that we in the carnivore and proper human diet spaces need to win over to our side in this battle for human flourishing and the proper human diet against this highly processed junk and the propaganda against meat in general. With that having been said, headline from Business Insider, Beyond Meat Sales Slumped Because People Are Eating Less Fake Meat, and the company says it gets why. Now that's an intriguing headline to be sure. It might make you think that Beyond Meat is closing up shop on its fake meat lines voluntarily, changing its company name to something like Best Meats, and finding a way to bring the price of grass-fed, grass-finished beef or heritage breed pork down to something that the typical consumer can afford. But no, they're definitely not doing that. Beyond Meat CEOs have figured out why the consumer hasn't responded well to their products. This ought to be entertaining from the article, quote, the fourth quarter of 2022 ends a challenging year for our business and category, one marked by persistently high inflation and trading down by consumers among proteins, slowing economy in key markets, and increased competitive activity, CEO and founder Ethan Brown said at the company's earnings call Thursday. Despite the huge slump in sales, Beyond, which sells products including fake jerky, chicken, and sausage, still beat Wall Street sales estimates. It seems reasonable that consumers may retreat from protein that can be two times the price of the animal-based equivalent during periods of intense inflation and reduced buying power, and that a reduction in price given this dynamic would spur increasing consumption. Brown said in the year to January, the price of food for at-home consumption increased by 11.3% according to data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Meat prices weren't hit as hard as other grocery categories. In the U.S., sales of Beyond's products to restaurants took the biggest hit, falling 30% year over year for the fourth quarter. Restaurants made up 25.8% of its U.S. fourth quarter sales, compared to more than half of its sales in international markets. Its supply chains include McDonald's, where it provides its McPlant patties and nuggets, and some Pizza Hut restaurants. The U.S. accounted for 72.5% of Beyond sales in 2022 by revenue. Beyond posted a net loss of $366 million in 2022, oof, compared to $182 million in 2021. The company previously announced plans to cut costs, including layoffs, end quote. Two consecutive years of hundreds of millions of dollars in net losses. How they are still in business, I don't actually know. But if they don't turn this thing around, probably by the end of the year, the chances that they will be around to peddle their products that mock nature and God are slim. 
In regards to what you might think about capitalism in general, the one thing pretty much everyone should be able to agree on is that the market is merciless to those companies that keep losing their investors enormous sums of money every year. $366 million, folks. Think about that. At some point, basic market forces have to catch up with Beyond Meat, unless non-market forces intervene to make their products more attractive, like the story about forced meat rationing that I covered earlier this week. But that's not all. You see, they understand, Beyond understands, that there are three big reasons for why their products consistently fail at the market, at least in the U.S., which makes up 72% of their total sales. Quote, According to Brown, the three major obstacles faced by the plant-based meat industry are taste, understanding of health benefits, and price. My belief is that we continue to get taste right and continue to get the health message right and then reduce that price barrier, it will grow the category, Brown said. Consultancy giant Delwa noted in September report that plant-based meat sales were dipping. With inflation, fewer people are willing to pay a price premium, the report said adding that its research found willingness to pay a premium for plant-based meat dropped 9% over a year. Information Resources, Inc., data cited by Bloomberg, shows that sales by volume of refrigerated meat alternatives at retailers fell 10.5% in the year to September 4th, end quote. Now that brings a smile to my face. A 10% drop in sales across an evil industry over the year. Look, I've reported in past videos that at the same time, actual meat, beef, pork, and chicken had their sales increase in the same time frame. And why is that? Because of price, taste, and yes, health knowledge. Folks, the narrative battle against seed oils is a pretty big win for us. I saw some pretty mainstream political commentators this past weekend talking about the dangers of seed oils. Our internal discussions among carnivores and in the broader proper human diet space has bled over into the mainstream discourse. And you know that the seed oil discussion can't possibly be the only thing from our world getting more traction in the broader world either. We know that carb reduction diets are getting more popular. And we know that people are becoming more suspicious of processed foods in general. Those are wins. And we see it in statistics like the one that shows a 10.5% drop in fake meat sales across the industry in a single year. It's not just the taste, which is a big factor because those things are nasty by all reports. But these companies won't win the health messaging battle either because what they peddle is false information. They just don't know it because they're stuck in the old paradigm that is dying. It's a paradigm that says that animal products and saturated fats are bad and should be limited. People are waking up, if slowly, to their having been hoodwinked on that issue. It's a glorious thing to see play out in real time. Now, are you as optimistic as I am about this? What do you think of the attempts to spin Beyond Meat's continuing woes into something positive? Well, let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. Just the sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. I'm Anthony Stein, the Practical Carnivore. Thanks for tuning in today.